Welcome to the Health Matters program produced by the Ministry of Health. I'm your host, Alicia Martin. Today we'll be talking about tobacco control in Guyana. Joining me on the program are Dr. Shaliza Gopi and Dr. Sidel Tom Fernandes. Dr. Gopi, welcome to the program. Thank you, Alicia. All right, so World No Tobacco Day is observed on May 31st yearly. Could you tell us about this um, event and what is it about? Right, so every year on May 31st, Guyana joins the rest of the world in celebrating World No Tobacco Day. And the ultimate aim of this day is to spread awareness on the risks of tobacco use and also on how we can make the world tobacco free. Wonderful. Um, what strategies have the Ministry of Health uh, implemented to combat or somewhat control the use of tobacco across the regions of Guyana? Right. So in 2005, Guyana acceded to the WHO's Framework Convention for Tobacco Control. And in 2017, we passed the Tobacco Control Bill. So Guyana is bound by a few mandates for tobacco control and one of the articles of FCTC is protection from smoke. So this is a very important one and how we um, do this is we have specific rules governing where persons can smoke. So smoking is completely banned in all indoor workspaces, all um, government facilities such as your schools, your health facilities, hospitals, national stadiums as well as all public transport. Additionally, a next article we focus on is packaging and labeling. So what this means is that any tobacco product is supposed to have health warnings or pictorial health warnings on every tobacco product. And this is supposed to occupy 60% of the labels of any tobacco product. Right, um, a next article I want to stress on is tobacco advertising, promotion, and sponsorship. So what we call this is our TAPS ban. So Guyana has actually banned all forms of advertising, promotion, and sponsorship of any tobacco product or electronic delivery system, including product display or any corporate social responsibility. So those are just a few ways Guyana is playing its part in tobacco control. Thank you, Dr. Gopi. Over the years, you guys have implemented so much and you've been doing so much uh, in the department, in the Ministry of Health. Um, how has persons been responding to some of the policies and even the legislation? So we can still say the legislation is fairly new, but 2017 is a few years back, but persons are still not aware of the Tobacco Control Act. So when we go into the regions, especially the hinterland regions, they're not aware of these rules. They're very happy to learn about them when we do our sensitization and they commit to reinforcing and to implementing and, ad and adhering to these rules and regulations. So you guys do frequent uh, outreach programs to sensitize and ensure persons know the effects or the harmful effects of smoking and tobacco products. Definitely. So every year we visit health centers, we try to target every region and hopefully in 2023 we'll target all 10. So we have been visiting health centers, health posts across the regions. This year we have started to visit schools across the regions and we've gotten um, very good feedback from the schools as well. How can the general public and distributors join the Ministry of Health in its task to combat the use of tobacco and tobacco products in Guyana? So firstly, it would be very good if everyone can be aware of all the rules and regulations in our Tobacco Control Act and adhere to them. One very important one is the sale of tobacco products to minors. That is strictly prohibited and so I want to encourage everyone to adhere to this. Also to the tabs ban I just spoke about, we are supposed to be um, completely free of any advertising of tobacco products. Additionally, um, sale of tobacco products should not be on display. They're supposed to be concealed. If a person wants to purchase that, it should be hidden. Let's talk about World No Tobacco Day 2023. Tell us about some of the activities that the Chronic Disease Unit have planned for this year's observance. Okay, so on the 31st itself, we will be launching the first tobacco cessation clinic. This will be done at the Industry Health Center and cessation clinics are very important for persons who wish to quit using tobacco. So hopefully this clinic will be very helpful in that quit attempt for persons. And um, this is just one of the first sets of clinics that we'll have. 
Additionally, we will have um, nine others, a few on the East Coast, East Bank, and one on the West Coast as well. All right. Thank you, Dr. Gopi. Um, do you have any word of encouragement to our listening and viewing audience? Yes. Um, smoking is very harmful. As we know, there are absolutely no benefits of smoking, whether it be cigarettes um, or vaping products, e-cigarettes, all of them have harmful chemicals in them. So I want to encourage our users to abstain, stay away from these products. I got a cigarette towel. Yeah. Like a bottle. What is, what is all these things for in this pocket? Hi, mister. That is the new law. Them cigarette manufacturers have to put those images on them pack. Yeah, but what is all these scornful things they got here, boy? Because they showcasing the effects of cigarette. And it also says... Smoking is dangerous to your health. Feel like I'm gonna change my mind. Let's all work together to prevent cigarette smoking related illnesses. A message from the Ministry of Health with support from PAHO WHO. Hookah is not a safe alternative to cigarettes. Hookah products contain at least 82 toxic chemicals, including tar, carbon monoxide, heavy metals, and carcinogens. People who smoke hookah may be at risk for some of the same diseases as cigarette smoke. These include oral cancer, lung cancer, stomach cancer, and decreased fertility. One head of hookah is equivalent to 70 cigarettes of nicotine. One hour of smoking hookah is equivalent to 100 to 200 times greater volume of smoke inhaled than with a single cigarette. For further information, consult the Chronic Disease Unit at the Ministry of Health at 223-7355. Dr. Sidel, thank you for joining me in the program. Thank you for having me, Alicia. Could you explain what first, second, and third hand smoking are and how it affects the individual carrying out the actions and others that may be in close proximity? Yes, so first, second, and third hand smoking exposure is basically when someone who's not smoking a tobacco comes in contact with the harmful substance from the cigarettes itself. It is important to know that, you know, even though the person who's not smoking the Actual chemicals can linger within the environment for up to five hours afterwards. And the same or similar effects that the person who's actually smoking can actually transmit to the other persons. And these effects can either be immediate effects or they can be long-term effects. Some of the immediate effects would include things as coughing. You can have irritation to the eye, to the nose. Those are some of the more common ones. And, you know, it's important to know that it can affect the adult, the child, even animals within the environment. And some of the more long-term effects, they can include um, from cancers, from the brain to the mouth, the head, the neck. You can even have cancers in the lung, the stomach, the colon, and even the bladder. Apart from cancers, other risks that persons who are exposed to secondhand, first-hand or even third-hand smoking would include things as a stroke, which is basically a uh, ischemic attack that can happen in the head. You can also have like ulcers to the mouth, lung disease or trouble breathing, particularly things like COPD, asthma can make it a bit worse. You can have bleeding to the stomach as well as problems like infertility for the female. And particularly if the person is pregnant, you know, the baby can be affected significantly. How long does it take uh, for persons to develop these conditions, um, do, do they have to be smoking for a quite, for quite a number of years? How long does the process take? So it depends all on the amount that they are smoking, but the constant exposure to the, the cigarette chemicals definitely increases their risk for developing any one of these complications. The immediate effects happen immediately after you come into contact, but the long-term effects takes a little bit longer, but it definitely depends on your exposure that you're having. Okay, for persons who um, may want to stop smoking, um, what would be your advice to them? How can they begin that process? Definitely. So as um, my colleague, Dr. Gopi, would have mentioned, we do have multiple facilities, both in the public and private um, facilities, programs that are available for persons who would want to quit. But wanting to quit is actually the first step. From the time that you make the decision, we, the physicians, are available to help you along that process. So once you make the decision, you can see your physician and we can definitely direct you to the right direction. 
So for persons who are going through a period of withdrawal, um, what techniques and coping mechanisms can they use uh, during those times or periods? So there are several techniques that are available, but some would work well for you and it might not work for somebody else. And that's the reason why we're encouraging patients who want to quit, they have made a decision to actually come to our smoke decision clinic so that we can equip you with the different techniques that we have available. Wonderful. How can family members assist? Because I know at times uh, this is not something that just the individual can do on their own, but they need that support. They need a community support as well. So what can others do to support persons who um, may be at the verge of quitting? So definitely I'm very happy you touched on it. Supporting them is very important. I think once they make that decision that, you know, you want to quit, we as the family, we need to actually support them and not to be on them, you know? And you can also come to us and we can give you some other techniques that we can use, right? So it, it, it definitely, there's a lot available, a lot out there, and it's something that we need to go one-on-one -on -one with individuals to give them the different techniques we have. But support is the important thing to remember. Definitely, it's a collaborative effort. Uh, many times persons think, okay, so we'll leave this to the physician, we'll leave this to the doctors and to the healthcare workers, but definitely family members can come on board, friends can come on board and to help the individual to get to the state in which they need to be. Definitely, we need to work together to support that person that wants to quit. Quitting smoking can save your life and can help you live up to 10 years longer. Quitting also lowers your risk of many diseases, including cancers, heart disease, and pregnancy challenges. Benefits of quitting can be seen in just minutes to days. Your heart rate will drop, allowing your heart to not have to work so hard. Carbon monoxide levels, poisonous gas in your blood will normalize. You will cough less and breathe easier. Even people who have smoked for many years benefit from quitting. It's the best way to protect your friends and family from the health risks associated with secondhand smoke. For further information, contact the Chronic Disease Unit, 223-7355. May 31st every year, Guyana join our sisters and brothers and our sister countries around the world. <clears throat> to observe No Tobacco Day. I wish a day will come soon, sooner than later, when we say on May 31st, we gather to celebrate the end of tobacco. But for now, we observe the World No Tobacco Day. It's an important day for every citizen on earth to remember this day. Because 8 million of our sisters and brothers die every year because of tobacco. More than 7 million of these 8 million die directly because they are smokers. And more than 1.2 million of our sisters and brothers die, not because they are smokers, but because of secondhand smoke. They were exposed. 8 million of our sisters and brothers that die because of tobacco, die prematurely. They die long before they should have. And I hear that some people say that I have an uncle that died and he was 85 years old. That's true, not everybody died prematurely. But even that 85 year old that died because of tobacco, could have lived to be a hundred, could have lived to be in their nineties. So it's not just that eight million people die prematurely, that is before 70. There are millions of others who could have lived longer than they actually live. Tobacco is a killer and we should not diminish that fact. The tobacco also utilize 200,000 hectares of land for the cultivation of tobacco leaves. 200,000 hectares. At the time, 
when we still need more land to grow food. This year, on May 31st, whilst observing No Tobacco Day, we also remember that we still need to grow more food so nobody goes hungry. We need to grow more food, not grow tobacco, which is a killer. Food allows us to live, tobacco kills. So it is unfathomable that a global system will still support the utilization of 200,000 hectares of land that could grow food to feed the hungry. But we grow tobacco that kills 8 million of us prematurely. That is why Guyana joins our sister countries. That is why Guyana joins our sisters and brothers. That is why Guyana was among the early signatures to the FCTC. But at a time when we have an existential crisis of climate change, global warming and climate change, we forget that one of the big contributors to emissions is tobacco. Tobacco smoking caused the release of 84 million tons of CO2 each year. 84 million tons that we could eliminate and therefore have a better chance of meeting our Paris obligations. How many people know that the tobacco companies actually produce six trillion tobacco cigarettes every year? We need to end this absurdity. How much of us know that in a world that still grapple with water shortage, that tobacco cultivation depletes 30 billion tons of water from the global system. So we have to be reasonable and practical. Tobacco is a killer and tobacco contribute to the existential threats that face the world. It is time we do more. And long after Coming up to 20 years since we signed the FCTC, we have made little progress toward controlling cigarettes. Can't have 24% of the global population still smoking. We can't have 30, 37% of global male population smoking. Can't have 8% of the global women population smoking. This is the challenge we have. And we can have a world instead of reducing, there are more young people smoking today than when we signed the FCTC. It is a, it, it, we should be indicted. It's an indictment of the global public health system that at a time when we want to end smoking, we have more young people. We still have poor to no, very poor to none regulation when it comes to e-cigarettes and when it comes to vaping, for example. Vaping and hookah are practices now that are gaining popularity in the young population, and we seem oblivious to the dangers. We have a killer among us, a killer that doesn't sneak into our lives, killer that we pay to have among us, a killer that our laws in every single country has given legitimacy to and is legalized. A killer that doesn't kill us 
by extrajudicial means, but utilize the judicial means to kill us. Because laws permit them to kill us. And at a time when governments introduce all kinds of new taxation, I'm glad that our government doesn't introduce new taxation. But we have seen in Guyana in a period before August, for a period of five years, 200 new taxes, not one addressed tobacco. And this is a global story. The time has come for us to think carefully. Tobacco is a killer. And whilst the FCT, FCTC's goal is to reduce its use, I hope that my speech, when we passed the resolution of the WHO to put into effect the FCTC, not only about grow more food and not grow tobacco, but that in my lifetime, and I don't know how many more years I have, but I know I will not die because of tobacco because I never smoke. But that in my lifetime, it is not just a talk about reducing the use of tobacco, but that we ban tobacco, that tobacco is not an agriculture product somewhere. And so let me end to the global leaders. The FCTC Article 17 and 18 spoke about agriculture and about finding an alternative for the tobacco growers. In all the countries where we grow tobacco, millet, wheat, other, other food products are still needed. They can grow these products and not tobacco. But the global leaders need to put into effect now, not tomorrow. Give effect to Article 17 and 18. And so today I speak as a public health official, not only to my sisters and brothers. Stop smoking. Talk to your children not to smoke. But I speak to the global community. Talk too much. Let's do more. Let's talk less. Let's do more. Let's grow more food. And let's grow less tobacco. Thank you. Thank you, our listening and viewing audience, for staying tuned with us. I'm Alicia Martin, saying goodbye for now.